as as you're one of the the, the core people in Zen projects, and one of the hardest things you you, you had to to address is uh, the the shadow page tables, yeah, which are always uh, a headache uh, when you try to build a hypervisor. Um, I believe you're in your sixth rewrite of the Zen hypertable algorithms. Um, we see that the hardware vendors are trying to address this in a different way by actually putting uh, supporting it from the hardware up. Uh, what, what's the best way to go? Well, I think. You know, it, it's one of those uh, areas where having some hardware support certainly helps, um, but it's not a, a panacea. There are, certainly with the hardware implementations that exist today, um, there are plenty of benchmarks, in fact, most benchmarks where you probably find that the, uh, the software approach that we're using uh, wins out because, you know, there's been a lot of investment in that software approach. Uh, there's some really, really clever code uh, in there now done by some, uh, some super smart people. So. Uh, it's an interesting arms race between the two. I think that uh, yeah, one of the things that we're looking at is depending on the workload, dynamically choosing whether you use the hardware approach or the purely software approach. But uh, you know, they, you, you kind of hope that uh, for that particular one, um, at least for the, the base functionality, the hardware should win out over time. But there will always be parts of virtualizing the MMU which are best done in software, and uh, that's where the OS Enlightenment, OS Power and Virtualization comes in. That's a huge win for virtualizing the MMU. That's a term I hear, I hear more, and more, more and more often, the marketing term OS Enlightenment. Yeah, so uh, it's actually, you know, we've been using the, uh, the term Power Virtualization. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I think it was Microsoft that came up yeah. with the term Enlightenment, which, uh, you know, we've been told is, is very much a nod to the, the Zen heritage uh, for that. So, uh, it, you know, I guess uh, Microsoft probably has rather more budget to spend on marketing than uh, uh, than you know open source projects. Well, we all know they know a few things, <laughs> know a few things yeah. about marketing. So yeah. well, I'm I'm not uh, at all uh, okay. upset with that term. I'm quite happy to use okay. it and adopt it. So you're enlightened <laughs> about their term. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Ian, it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, you just mentioned the uh, Citrix and the Sun join us. Uh, <laughs> um, do you think the the contributions from the open source community have slowed down since the Citrix takeover? Um, there's certainly, uh, we certainly haven't seen that. Um, if you think about uh, the life of the, the Zen project, there have been a number of kind of significant changes. When we, when we left the university to set up Zen Source, you know, people were worried that uh, we might, uh, you know, go off and take it closed source or something, but we didn't. It's the same uh, group of guys, you know, myself, Keir Fraser, Steve Hank, Christian Limpang, all of the same guys working on the, on the, the project, um, and, and now many more, of course. And the the Citrix uh, acquisition. Uh, of ZenSource, uh, you know, that was certainly something we had to explain to people what was happening. Um, you know, I think the community is, uh, uh, has seen that nothing has changed. I mean, one of the things which we, we did do is just to, uh, to provide greater transparency. We set up Zen.org and the Zen Advisory Board, so all of the, the websites and, you know, every, where, you, where, we, where we run the project, all of that has moved over to Zen.org and there's now the Advisory Board. Um, with folks from companies like Intel and HP and IBM and uh, you know big companies that are contributing to Zen now have that uh, you know oversight from the advisory board. So I, I think the community is pretty happy, and I think the project's going from strength to strength. Okay. How do you see this shift uh, Zensor has made from building a para virtualized platform that served uh, the open source community and mainly targeted Unix platforms to a company which has a main audience uh, build the average Windows admin? Well, we were never. You know, focus just on uh, on running you know open source operating systems. That was that was never the aim. We wanted to uh, to build a platform that would uh, be OS agnostic, uh, be able to run any OS and do a great job of it. And I think that's what we we built with Zen. You know, we put an awful lot of effort into uh, making sure we did a good. Always put a lot of effort to make sure we did a good job of running Windows because you know there are a lot of Windows Windows OS instances out there. I can't uh, can't deny that. So uh, it it is something which is. Uh, has always been important to us. I think that you know what is different is the way that say Zen Source and now now Citrix um, look at uh, packaging Zen. So lots of different companies bringing uh, Zen to market. Obviously the Linux vendors are mainly concerned about running Linux. Solar, you know, the Sun is mainly concerned about running Solaris. Um, one of the things that Citrix and Zen Source have tried to do was to, to really make sure that it was OS agnostic, that we did a great job of running Windows and a great job of running Linux as well. I mean, if you, you know, uh, Zen is awesome running Linux, it completely blows any other virtualization solution out of the water. And, uh, and running Windows is extremely good too. Certainly, uh, uh, you know, we don't, I'm not aware of any benchmarks we lose, put it like that. 
when you look at the, um, the fight going on for the, the, the companies building the management frameworks and, and projects like Anomaly, OpenQRM, also Red Hat and, and Novel, um, was the acquisition of sensors by Citrix your, your easy way out of that fight? I think we're still very much uh, in the fight. And I think um, you know, the, you know, Zen Source and all of these other companies are building management source on top of Zen. I think that uh, all of those companies are uh, coming at it from a different point of view. So the, the uh, you know, Linux vendors are, are trying to provide that same look and feel they have on uh, for, for Linux uh, and to you know, expose virtualization through those same GUIs and, uh, and, and tools. Um, yeah, the difference is that uh, the companies like uh, Zensource and Citrix are interested in making it uh, very easy to use and uh, you know, kind of the model is building a virtual machine hosting appliance um, and trying to hide all of that complexity and expose it via a web GUI or, uh, or Windows uh, user interface. So you know, there are always going to be lots of different companies building tools on top of Zen and even if you look at, um, at something uh, you know, like Zen Server, the, the Citrix product, there are all of these other companies then building things on top of uh, Zen Server. You know, companies like Agenera and Platform and, and, and Marathon. So there's a there's a very healthy ecosystem of building stuff on top of other people's stuff. And uh, you know, I guess I guess people are happy because everyone's making money. So. Some analysts say that Microsoft uh, acquires Zen Server by proxy, hinting <laughs> at a future takeover of Citrix by by uh, Microsoft. What, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, well, I, I really don't know anything about about that. Um, you know, I think if uh, Microsoft was going to buy Citrix, it would have done it a long time ago. Um, I think that Microsoft is uh, a very close Citrix partner, um, and uh, but ZenSource, you know, you know, worked closely with Microsoft as well. There are a number of projects we worked on together, such as um, defining the uh, some of the, the power virtualization or enlightenment uh, extensions yeah. to enable uh, Zen Guest to run on. Uh, uh, Microsoft's um, hypervisor when that ships, and also vice versa. Um, I've never, uh, you know, we've always found Microsoft quite easy to deal with, to be honest. So uh, it wasn't wasn't a big concern. Had good support from them. Yeah, I think uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, certainly all the people that we deal with are uh, perfectly nice guys. So. Maybe talk about the, the less perfectly nice uh, guys and, and the woman currently, because <laughs> I, I uh, when I when I read articles on blogs and in the press, I, I feel that VMware is, is, is recently throwing some um, some mud, and especially the marketing department at VMware uh, at Citrix and Sensors, where they try to cast some doubt uh, on your on your project on, on your uh, products. Um, but what do you think about these uh, marketing techniques? Well, you know, there's been. Uh, a certain use of you know fad tactics and, uh, and things like that. I guess that's sort of a natural reaction. Um, you know that's what marketing departments will go and do. You know we have good working relationships with uh, some of the, the technical folk at VMware. We work together on uh, the OVF uh, virtual appliance format. You know I know that some of uh, their engineers get pretty embarrassed about uh, some of the stuff that their marketing department does when uh, they try and position things which are uh, you know you know Zen. Uh, features or uh, um, you know architectural uh, you know, implementations as weaknesses against their product, whereas they know that they've got teams working flat out to try and implement those same weaknesses uh, in their own products. So, you know that's just uh, just the way it is. Marketing departments, uh, I guess, go off and uh, and do that, but. Uh, at the end of the day, customers will uh, hopefully get the right message and uh, buy the right product. <laughs> at least it shows they take you serious. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, I guess. It should, guess we should be flattered. <laughs> okay. Another exclusive interview brought to you by Virtualization.com.